Today is Saturday, November 26th. A common tradition over the Thanksgiving holiday is to go around the table and share what you're grateful for. But did you know a regular practice like that may actually make you healthier both mentally and physically? Studies cited by the American Heart Association have shown that people who regularly express gratitude tend to have lower blood pressure, sleep and eat better, and are better able to manage stress. Our first guest today has focused her research on how gratitude can rewire our brains and how feeling grateful is connected to overall well-being and resiliency. And ironically, she now uses the practices from her own brain research to live with gratitude despite having brain cancer. University of Michigan psychology instructor and doctoral candidate Christina Costa joins me today to share how we can all benefit from giving thanks daily based on science and her own experience. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy Special Edition Saturday, when we sit down with a different expert or celebrity every Saturday to talk about something in the news. Don't forget to tune in every Monday through Friday for our regular episodes, where we provide all the day's news in 10 minutes. I'm Erica Mandy. It's now time for today's Special Edition Saturday. Christina, thank you for coming on the Newsworthy. Thank you for having me, Erica. I'm happy to be here. So before we really get into the science of gratitude and what it does in our brains, I want to talk about your experience with it. You have shared your own battle against brain cancer and how it's influenced your research as well. So first, how are you doing? And also, what was the key, do you think, for you to be able to hold on to positivity, gratitude, and resilience in the face of such an intense struggle? I'm doing very well. I get scans every eight weeks to make sure that the cancer and the tumor is stable. And I had a scan last Thursday and it was stable. So that is always great news. I definitely struggled. It was not always easy for me to practice gratitude or use that as a tool automatically. We can have both, right? Like we can be really struggling and also practice gratitude. And so I like to share with people that that's exactly what my experience was, is that that was very tough. It is still very tough. And I'm able to use these practices from my research, ironically, to sort of bolster bolster my own well-being. Okay, so you're talking about kind of both and at the same time. So I do want to ask about that because sometimes when people talk about positivity, other experts say, you know, you really need to allow yourself to feel the bad feelings, to, or not bad feelings, all the different feelings to validate those feelings and have those emotions. But also you want to feel positive and, you know, find gratitude. How do you balance those two things? It's really just finding how they can both exist, allowing them both to exist, right? And I had a wondrous bunch of professionals that helped me do that. It's certainly not an easy thing to do. But um, the field of positive psychology, when people hear positive psychology, they think really it's all about, oh, it's it's positive and it's happiness. And it is that, but it's not just that. It really is telling both stories instead of just the stress narrative. So when you talk about gratitude, what does that look like? Is that just saying out loud that you're grateful for something or do you have to feel all of those feelings deeply? Yeah, you want to marinate in those feelings almost. So like this one practice that my research mentor developed with her team, it's called the three good things method. So traditionally, a gratitude list might look like, okay, waking up and I'm journaling three good things that are happening in my life, three things I'm grateful for, very simple. In their practice, they add the, tell us the three good things, but also then why are you grateful for them? Or three good things that went well today and why? And they can be so, so small. And when we start small, then we start thinking about things the next day, like, oh, I have to write my gratitude journal tonight. So I'm going to be more aware of things I'm grateful for. And, you know, being grateful for just waking up today might turn into bigger things later on as we notice more. If you can involve other people in creating those routines or traditions, it makes it, you have an accountability partner. It makes it a little easier. Me and my friend on phone calls will often end with, what's one good thing, you know, if we're like complaining about all these different things that are happening in our life. Okay, what's one thing that's going well or something we're looking forward to, something we're grateful for right now. If you have kids, think about at the dinner table, what are you grateful for today? What's one thing that happened and why? Why are you grateful for that? Why are you grateful for your teacher or for this friend? Another common practice is writing gratitude letters. So like really thanking the people in your life and doing that helped me focus on 
like I have all these amazing, amazing, amazing doctors, medical professionals in my life. And so to really take time each day to think about them and thank them for the way they're impacting my life, um, my friends, my family, it really helped me understand and see like I have all of these people, I have this huge team behind me. And that's what kept me going for a very long time. So around the holidays, a lot of different emotions happen. Any advice for people about feeling gratitude, about maintaining or starting that practice this time of year? I highly, highly recommend starting with the three good things method. And I also highly, highly recommend that you set yourself a timer or a reminder because it sounds so simple, but it's hard to create that habit. Once we create that habit, it gets easier over time, but we need to start it. So set your timer. I recommend either the morning right when you wake up or at night because you're able to reflect on your day. I personally do the practice in the morning. So I have a Google Doc that there's a link on my desktop. So every morning when I open my computer, that's the first thing I do. It's really easy for me. And then sometimes it's fun to scroll back and look at different months. But that's the easiest place to start. And it's free and fast. So based on your research in neuroscience and psychology, how does gratitude benefit us from a health standpoint? What is actually happening in our brains when we feel grateful? Doing these practices both increase our happiness and decrease our depression. But what the cool thing is, is that there are all of these other physical things going on when we are practicing gratitude. For example, people who express and experience gratitude show less physical pain. Our feel-good neurotransmitters are boosting, so our serotonin and our dopamine. Cortisol, our stress hormone, is being lowered. And if our cortisol is managed, like our immune system is more likely to be boosted. So those are really the decrease in pain and increase in immune system are the fascinating findings to me as a psychologist. Do you find the more that you practice gratitude, the easier it becomes? Yes. So we call that neurons that fire together, wire together, meaning like the more that you do something, the faster those connections are going to work the next time. So if you think about riding a bike, right, the first time you ride a bike, it's really hard. But then after you practice a while, it gets easy. And then even if you let it go for a couple of years, you could come back to a bike and be able to ride it. Your brain's going to remember that. And practicing gratitude is the, is the same way. So if at first it doesn't feel natural, it feels kind of weird, over time, if you set up those tools like an alarm to remind you to do it, it's going to get easier and it's going to become habit. All right. So getting out a journal, writing three things you're grateful for and why is a great place to start. And there are other options to marinate in the feelings of gratitude as well, including meditation. In fact, new research shows meditation may be just as beneficial as prescription medications to treat patients with anxiety disorders. So today, to help you unwind from what are often fun but chaotic holiday gatherings, we are doing something a little bit different. We're offering you a five-minute gratitude meditation that you can listen to right here, right now. My friend Katie Kermitsos is the founder of the Women's Meditation Network and has created a brief, beautiful guided meditation just for us. If you're new to meditation, don't worry. This is a short one. And just like our previous guest said, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. But first, we need to take a break to thank our sponsors. The Newsworthy is brought to you by canvasprints.com. If you are not sure what to get someone on your list this holiday season, canvasprints.com is such a great option to give something personal and meaningful, but also not too crazy expensive or time consuming. Canvas prints start at less than 11 bucks for an eight by eight print. And then canvas sizes can go up to 60 by 60 or put a photo memory on a mug starting at just $11.99. There are so many options that will feel personal and unique and get something for yourself like I did. I'm so impressed by the big, beautiful wall display that I ordered showing off our family, and I can't believe how easy and quick it was to put in the order and receive it. Plus, right now, canvasprints.com has a special offer just for our listeners. Go to canvasprints.com and use the code NEWSWORTHY25 to get 25% off your entire order of canvas prints, canvas wall displays, metal prints, photo tiles, photo blankets and pillows, and much more. Find the perfect holiday gift for everyone on your list and save with this amazing offer. That's canvasprints.com and use the code NEWSWORTHY25 for 25% off your entire order. And thanks to our other sponsor, ZocDoc. 
For some people, the upcoming new year will mean changes to your health insurance. And sometimes that can mean your go-to doctors are suddenly out of network. Whether that'll be your situation in a couple of months or you just need to find a new specialist, for example, ZocDoc can help. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. It'll help you sort through doctors that are in-network and in your neighborhood. Plus, the mobile app is as easy as ordering a ride to a restaurant, allowing you to search, find, and book doctors with a few taps. You can choose to book an appointment in person or remotely. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc, and I like it whenever I need to find a new doctor, too. Go to ZocDoc.com newsworthy and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C, ZocDoc.com slash newsworthy, ZocDoc.com slash newsworthy. Okay, now to the guided gratitude meditation with Katie Kremitzos. Be sure you're in a place that is safe to feel relaxed and maybe close your eyes. We hope you enjoy it. Close your eyes gently and allow yourself to calm down. Surrender to the rhythm of your body and its sounds. Let your shoulders drop and your mind slowly clear. Let your body melt. Everything heavy disappear. If you bring yourself inside and float in the space within. The good that's yours appears outside and in. The conscious breaths you take quickly make you aware. of your body's beautiful magic, of its love and its care. Basic things are blessings, each and every one. Opportunity for growth 
to help others and to give. Each of these endless blessings are yours every single day. Let the gratitude blossom and soften your heart today. If you enjoyed that meditation, you can listen again over on Katie's podcast called Meditation for Women. It'll be available there on December 13th, though you can find many other short guided meditations to try right now on her show. In fact, she wanted us to let you know that listeners of her show can enter to win a gratitude gift basket this month filled with more than $300 of health and wellness products. For more details about the giveaway and how to enter, check out the link in our episode notes. And to learn more from our first guest, Christina Costa, be sure to follow her on Instagram. She shares updates about her health journey, psychology, teaching, and accessible education. And before we go, I and the team here at The Newsworthy want to share our gratitude for all of you. We are so thankful that you trust us and turn to us as part of your daily routine. We would not exist without you. And a special thanks to our insiders who support the show and get ad-free episodes. You can learn more at thenewsworthy.com insider. We hope you enjoy the rest of your holiday weekend. We'll be back on Monday with our regular episodes. We share 10-minute daily news roundups every weekday morning. Until then, have a great weekend.